Hello everyone, and welcome to Fictional Vortex, so we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto had a la carte and vampire's power. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. As Sarah's was walking through the basement, she was pretty young about 20 years old with one striking feature. Her eyes were red instead of your typical human's colors. She also had pointy teeth, in short she was a vampire. Now vampires aren't supposed to exist but they exist so what can we do about it but accept it? Sarah's was walking to her master's coffin. For those who don't understand the relationship, her master turned her into a vampire and she is now his fledging. As Sarah's opened the coffin and probed into the darkness for Alucard, her master's name, body, she finally grasped something that felt like an arm. As she pulled the arm up she found that the arm was in his pants and his body was being raised by his belt. Sarah's face quickly turned red, and she then tossed the body away from her. So, police girl, I never knew you was that eager. Alucard broke out laughing insane laughter. Um, master, I didn't mean for that to happen, sorry, she laughed a sheepishly laughter. So how fares Walter? Alucard's expression never changed for a moment while Sarah's expression darkened. Walter isn't himself anymore but he's slowly recovering his memories again. Pretty soon he may come back to duty. Sarah's slowly spoke as if Alucard was a child. Gwahaha. This shall be most interesting. The angel of death returns to his rightful place at the head of death's side. Integra aka Sir Helsing and the last of the noble, proud lineage and the woman to whose Alucard bows to then opened the door and strolled to front of Alucard and then she did something no one was expecting. She shot Alucard in the head and grinned in mad pleasure as Alucard began his inhuman recovery. That's for setting my paperwork behind a whole month. Alucard then used his shadow powers to raise himself up and met Integra's eyes, a bond of understanding passed between them while Sarah's was totally lost. The angel of death in question was in a padlocked room with a straitjacket on. His eyes darting across the room for any means for escape. He searched for any methods before giving up and collapsing in a sigh of defeat. For he was captured by the remaining Nazis of World War II and had his youth restored in the cost of his memories, he was recaptured by the Helsing, mainly through the efforts of Sarah's and Alucard who used their command across Shadow to provide targets for Walter to send his lethal wires to. His wires were made from a special metal that was most strong, indeed. As Walter perked up because he heard footsteps and got to a stance that would make use of his inhuman agility. Alucard then walked through the wall and smiled as Walter sighed. Now, Angel of Death, do you want to be free of this cursed prison? What do you think? Walter spat at Alucard. Now that's not nice at all. Alucard then laughed more of his trademark laughter. His laughter was abruptly ended by a deep rumbling of the mansion. Pictures were ripped to shreds, vases exploded and the staff and the soldiers fell on the ground screaming. The entire mansion disappeared from England without a trace, the mansion was flying through the air spinning, people were holding on anything that could offer support to them in this time of crisis. Integra was being held by Sarah's who used her limited control across the darkness to anchor both the women. Alucard was holding Walter by his collar and Walter was cursing Alucard all the while. Now we must ask what happened. The answer may shock you. For Kyubi the Nine Tails Fox Demon tore open a dimensional rift between the worlds. As Kyubi roared out exclaim of surprise as a giant mansion appeared out of a rift and landed in a lucky, empty plot of land in Konoha the village of the leaf. It wasn't on purpose. That can be said about Kyubi's tearing of the rift with one of its grand nine tails. Kyubi was attacking Konoha the hidden village while the ninjas that populated the village were doing a last ditch effort to hinder the Kyubi from destroying their beloved village. Alucard then teleported out and gazed across the burning city. Ah! War is being waged! Alucard roared out and began to play an imaged piano. Alucard then brought out Integra, Sarah's, and Walter but left the rest of the staff in sides because the shock would no doubly be too much for them. Look! Master! Yet in another London drenched in burning flames. Look! At the people being slaughtered as if they were lambs. Alucard cackled madly and spread his arms wide and span and then fell on the ground laughing. Such a shame, I can't wage my power against that demon that I spy in the distance. Alucard then sighed melodramatically. Integra was now at a most difficult decision, do she help the people or flee? 
As Integra announced her decision, she was cut off by a man rushing towards her screaming, Kyubi's here. We're dead. Run. As the man ran and ran, he was then stabbed by one of Kyubi's tails. I sense an aura of raw power. I challenge you, who you are, Kyubi snarled, searching for this aura for Kyubi couldn't see like humans could do. He could only see auras which through his eyes spied an aura set apart from the rest of the others. This particular aura was pitch black in contrast with the people grayish or bright colors auras. Alucard was standing in the exact same spot as the aura that Kyubi was searching for. Master, I thirst for battle. Let me wage sweet battle upon this damned creature. Alucard then took out his weapons Caswell and Jackal. Put your weapons away, I hereby release level 0, hold release until target is silenced, target is the fox demon. Sir Helsinger Integra then lit a cigar and held her elbows and also ordered Sarahs to release Walter. Now, butler, you have a choice, you can flee and be cut down by Sarahs or you aid Alucard in his fight. Walter then agreed to the fight, after all, he was a naturally born berserker. Sarahs then took her two anti-tank cannons from the darkness that surrounded the four deadly people. Alucard then roared out laughing as he felt his former power returning to him as his armor crafted itself from air and a sword exploded from his hand and his face then became covered in beards. Kyubi finally found the aura that was bothering it. Kyubi's eyes widened as the aura increased in size by almost sixfold. This is the true power of the son of dragon, Dracula. Alucard now known as Dracula for the reminder of the battle then summoned his minions from his coffins. People across the villages then stared at the figure in shining armor at front of a massive army. Now, we see who the true monster is. Alucard spoke to Kyubi. You can't defeat me, for I am the great Kyubi. Kyubi roared out, the earth then exploded with Kyubi's roar. Alucard then leapt in the air and flew to Kyubi's face and drew first blood. As Kyubi screamed in pure rage, the nine tails trashing and demolishing even more building and some of the army that was under Dracula's command for those army was the very people that Dracula ate. A person of particular note was a berserker wielding two silver axe that rushed in a furious attack towards one of Kyubi's legs and yelled out in delight as he heard flesh and muscles tearing under his lethal strokes. His victory however was short-lived as Kyubi chomped him up and tore through the body with little efforts. Sarah's, Meanwhile was busy dodging and shooting the swatting tails with her agility gained by drinking blood. Walter went back inside the mansion and searched for his wires which took him about an hour to find. Meanwhile, Sarah's ran out of ammo and flew to Integra's side and whisked her away to a safe place from which to watch the fight raging on between Dracula and Kyubi. Impressive for a demon, you're one of the few that can keep Dracula at bay for more than a few moments. But this all ends now. Alucard then roared out relying on his forbidden technique to finally conquer Kyubi. You are most interesting, vampire. The vampires I faced fell easily to my fangs and claws. Gwhaha, I will not lose to you. As Alucard chanted the dark ritual words of power, he was shocked to see a soul man leaping from the mountain on Kyubi's back. The man in question had violently blonde hair and was cloaked in a white robe with red flames on the edges of it. In short, he was the fourth Hokage, sworn to protect everyone. Alucard heard a short sentence and heard the sound of hands clapping together in various positions. He then felt an immense power, even more powerful than him seal the Kyubi. He saw the spirit of Kyubi flowing across the night sky like it was twilight and the spirit then whirled and whirled and flew to a location far away from him. He also saw the man that leapt fall down head down. He then teleported to that man and caught him and set him on the ground, when Alucard turned the man across. I see, that was Alucard's only remark upon seeing the man's face. For that man was dead. Pasted on his face was a generous smile. As Alucard roared out as he felt his vast power beginning to leave his body. Shadows and darkness exploded from his body leaving bloody holes in his body which he regenerated in matter of seconds. Alucard then began a melodramatic song for the dead man who gave his life to kill the Kyubi. As a group of men rushed up towards Alucard and the dead man, one man in specific had the guts to accuse Alucard of killing the dead man. Alucard then stared at that man and lowered his glasses. Fear what you do not know, Alucard's only reply to that unjust accusation, an elderly man then walked to the front of the group and said, Patience, 
Hyuga-san. I can sense that Arashi the legendary fourth Hokage used a forbidden seal to seal the Kyubi away inside a person. The only question is where? I know where the spirit of Kyubi went to but I must consent with my master first. Alucard hinted darkly, licking his bloody lips, fangs showing in a show of intimidation. The group protested heavily to this, some even went so far to suggest murdering the person that Kyubi was sealed in for revenge for killing the Hokage. Alucard snarled and bought his jackal up to that man's face and said, Dogs aren't capable of defeating a monster, only a man. What the hell did you say to me? Hyuga gestured quite violently to Alucard. As Sarahs flew Integra and herself to Alucard's location, Integra spoke to Sarahs. If this turns badly, be prepared for Alucard's level 0 release again. Yes, sir. Sarahs saluted the best she could because she was busy carrying Integra. As Sarah's dropped Integra quite lightly, she stood in front of Alucard and bought out her cannons which were now empty but they didn't understand the concept of guns. Who are you to match Kyubi that easily? The elderly man inquired. I am a true Nosferatu. That was Alucard's only reply. Ah, I thought that entire race was wiped out a long time ago. I am the third Hokage, I am most pleased to meet you. We aren't from here, we are from the world called Earth and we live in the United Kingdoms and England. Integra finally made her entrance. Master, did you enjoy the fight? Alucard inquired wildly. Yes, servant, you did very well. This is the first time I have seen you so happy after a battle. Integra then exhaled out some of her cigar's smoke. Some of the men that were in a pack didn't take well to Integra at all. One of the men that was in the group called her a, damn, she's a fucking dyke. Sarah's, Alucard's eyes both widened while Integra's eyes narrowed and issued a command for both Alucard and Sarah's to have their way with that man. As Alucard was busy eating the unsuspecting man in front of horrified men, the third Hokage then exclaimed, Well, you certainly have a duo of most lethal people with you, my lady. Thank you for that praise and I am not a lady, I am Sir Helsing. Integra corrected him for he didn't know the customs of England. Ah, my apologies, Sir Helsing, what can you say to me about your appearance here and on the behalf of the village of Konoha, I welcome you here. Thank you, Hokage, we was in the midst of a calm night when my mansion began to shake and then fell through the sky and landed into your village. We still have some people in there, about 200 peoples. Integra caught on the customs quickly. Walter was spied running up to Integra. So, I missed the fight. Walter then became downcast. Gwhahaha, it was a fight worthy of death himself. Alucard roared out laughing. Don't rub it in, you damn vampire, Walter yelled at a laughing Alucard. Now let us ignore those two childish people, now what can we do to aid you? Integra asked the Hokage. The Hokage then replied, We need to assure the location of the person which the Kyubi was sealed in, your servant. Alucard knows the location of the person. But he refuses to tell us before consenting with you first because he heard some of our less agreeable requests to do to that person. Servant, bring the person here. Alucard then teleported to the place he recalled the spirit being whirled at. As Alucard's eyes clapped upon the person, he was immediately ashamed, which was a rarity for the people that suggested killing. For the person was a mere baby. The baby in question was in the middle of a large ritual piece with dozens of candles around him. A seal was on his stomach burning into the baby's flesh. Alucard then checked for the gender for the baby and was struck by a most hideous odor issuing from the baby's buttocks. Alucard then deadened his nose and then checked the baby's gender. So, a boy defeated a monster? This is most interesting, Alucard roared out laughing. Alucard took the baby in his arms and then teleported to his master and after he teleported to the proper location. He then snarled at the people that had weapons in their hands and presented the baby to Integra. Integra softly stroked the baby's head and spoke, I wish to take care of this baby. For Integra sensed a vast potential in the baby. The Hokage then said, Well, we need to make all of you citizens of Konoha first then you can adopt the baby, and I heard that you had about 200 people inside your mansion. I wish for them to mingle with the local population to help replace those Kyubi so mercilessly killed. Integra agreed. Excellent, now please come with me to my office or do you wish to do it later? The Hokage asked. Later, until we repair this once proud village. 
the commander of the Helsing organization spoke. Alucard, I wish for you to aid them in rebuilding the village. And no sabotaging, you are under orders to rebuild this village even greater than it once was. Integra spoke most dangerously. Alucard bowed down and said, Yes, my master, and grinned madly. Alucard then flew off to gain lumber. Sarahs, would you help me in rising this baby? Sir Helsing asked. Of course. I've always wanted a little brother. Sarah's squealed which caused the baby to cry even harder. Walter, do you wish to be my butler once again? Integra turned to the last member of the group. But of course, my dear Sir Integra. Walter stood erect and proud. I remember who you are now, forgive me for worrying you, Sir Integra. Integra then turned to the Hokage and spoke, as Integra cooed to the baby that was now sleeping in her arms and then she beckoned for Sarah's to take the baby off her arms and then she stood in her trademark pose. Now, Hokage, what is the baby's name? The Hokage then chuckled and suggested a most powerful name, Naruto. Several months later, Alucard was on a frontline war with the hidden village the Village of Cloud. Kakashi was there with Alucard, Walter was there as well. Kakashi was sitting atop a boulder with a very bored expression on his face which was covered up by his trademark mask. Alucard then bought out Jackal and shot a tree and grinned madly as a cloud ninja fell over dead with an immense hole in his chest with a shocked expression on his face. So, Alucard, how did you know that the ninja was there? Kakashi asked in a sarcastic voice. You underestimate me too much, dog. Alucard discovered a nickname for Kakashi. Bastard, Kakashi didn't even really bother to come up with an insult to Alucard. Walter the meanwhile was busy reading Icha Icha Paradise with a most bloody nose pasted on his face. Walter then chuckled like a manic would. I blame you for turning the angel of death into a pervert. Alucard then tsked at the shameless act that Walter was now performing, to give you a hint he was holding the book with one hand and his pant was down to his ankles. Hey, not my fault that I found it on a dead ninja, but I'm kinda interested what's in the book. Kakashi then shifted his position atop the boulder. Alucard then gazed over Walter's shoulders and his eyes widened. Never knew a woman could do that at all. Alucard was now very surprised at the picture explicated on the book. Let's go back. Walter was now finished with his business and pulled up his pants and washed his hands. Walter then put on his trademark gloves and then threw out his wires and nodded at Alucard and Kakashi who immediately disappeared. As Kakashi was leaping through the trees, Walter was riding a flock of bats that had the same sinister aura as Alucard. All three was moving at a high speed towards Konoha. As they leapt over a massive cliff, they then flew through the air and watched Konoha while they were falling down the cliff. Alucard then mumbled, enough of this, and grabbed both Kakashi and Walter and then teleported to Konoha's front gate, they landed with a dusty thud and waved to the guards and the guards led them in among a bustling street full of youths and women that was now pregnant. The reasons why so much women were pregnant is because the Hokage and Helsing made a secret pact, Helsing let her troops meet the women and the staff mingled with the surviving ninjas. Well, the troop was most happy to get it, and made babies at an alarming rate. In a few years the population of Konoha would be even larger than before and the Hokage was proud of this fact especially after being at a war with a village and fending off a demon of immense power. The Hokage was in a meeting with Integra discussing the defense of the village. Integra then ordered Walter and the weapons scientists still working under her to mass produce weapons that could be used by women and also various cannons made from metals. They inserted the cannons in various key positions and since the fitting of the cannons to the wall and Konoha later became known as the Iron Curtain due to the fact that they never lost the village after the cannons was in place. The people was proud of the fact that villages feared the Iron Curtain, and they had to protect it daily from enemy ninjas. Naruto in the question was now a very happy boy. Sarah's made a new toy for him and she bought him to the park almost every day. Now this may sounds odd. But Sarah's had long since mastered her vampire side and was just a few notches under Alucard in terms of skills. Naruto blabbed happily as he made various sounds and played with his toys and cried for Sarah's to play with him. Sarah's smiled sweetly as she watched Naruto playing. She noticed someone with a baby and waved at the person. This person was alarmed and flinched but gradually inched towards Sarah's. The person had a complete white pair of eyes and her hair was midnight black with hints of bluish colors. She then nodded at Sarah's and Sarah's said, 
Why don't we let the babies play with each other? Sarah's asked the mysterious woman. Forgive me for being afraid and excuse my manners, I am the matriarch of the Hyuga house. The woman smiled at Sarah's. The woman let the baby down and the baby crawled towards Naruto and cooed to him in baby language and the woman said, Babies are the epitome of innocence. Sarah's agreed to that and asked for the woman's name. As the mysterious woman revealed her name, it was Mamori. So, Mamori, what's your daughter's name? Sarah's inquired. It's Hinata Chan. Mamori replied. That's a pretty name, Sarah's grinned at Mamori who seems to be caught off guard by Sarah's pointy fangs. Oh, I forgot to tell you I am a vampire, Sarah's chuckled sheepishly. Mamori looked upon Sarah's with a mix of fear and awe. Sarah's then turned her eyes on Naruto which was getting along with Hinata quite well. Guess they like each other, huh? Hiyashi walked in the scenery. Have no fear. Hiyashi spoke as Sarah's leapt to her feet. I know you. You're the one master told me to watch out for, Sarah's snarled. You're right about me being needed to be watching out for, Hiyashi told Sarah's. Look at him. You would never know a demon was sealed inside him. Hiyashi spoke sadly, referring to Naruto. But Hiyashi sama, Hanada chan likes him. Mamori spoke up. Hmm, is the Helsing family going to train Naruto? Hiyashi had a most deviously plan in mind. Of course. Why ask? Sarah's was questioning Hiyashi. Well, I was thinking of an alliance between our houses. Hiyashi was pointing out the benefits of an alliance. Well, I need to talk to Sir Integra about it first. If you want me to I can have Master teleport her here. Sarah's perked up. Please do so. Hiyashi's eyes began to show hints of joy and sinister thinking at work. Moments passed before Integra stepped out of a patch of shadows followed by Alucard. So, I heard this talk about an alliance, am I not right? Integra then lit up a cigar which was promptly taken away by Sarah's who said it was bad for the babies. You are most correct, Sir Helsing, Hiyashi's eyes seemed to quiver out of eagerness. Why do you want an alliance this badly? Integra still doubted his ulterior motives. This would take a long explanation but I shall attempt. Firstly off, my clan would take care of your clan in terms of money and services and we can train more youths with some of those guns you have. I know that Naruto will be a force to be reckoned with in the later future and I want to bind my house to your house. I suppose it is like, I scratch your back, you scratch mine, the head of Hyuga spoke. Let me think it over, Hiyashi, Integra grimaced. Very well. For now I and my wife must depart to home. Good night. Hiyashi smiled a slightly evil smile. As Integra and Alucard waited for Sarah's to pick up Naruto and then they went back to the mansion which was under construction for the baby, as Walter bowed to Helsing and presented her with meals for the baby. How was your meeting, Sir Integra? Walter smiled elderly smile. Most eventful. Integra smiled an odd smile and a most sinister one at that. I learnt that we may have a chance of surviving in this world, but you will need to develop new technology all by your lonesome self, until I manage to convince the Hokage to send you some aid. Integra then waved for Walter to leave. Alucard, go to sleep, in preparation for your mission tomorrow night. Alucard then retreated into the walls, grinning madly, with the walls sprouting eyes and mouths. Sarah's, how do you feel about this arranged marriage? Integra asked Sarah's yet again. Well, sir, it's a bit odd, after all. I'm used to living in a modern time not an old time like this place. Sarah's spoke quite unimpressed. I've decided to accept it. Ignoring Sarah's surprise, she continued. Think about it, since Naruto has a demon sealed into him, who do you think would let him near their families? Some people are so damned prejudiced. Hiyashi luckily offered us a way out of a right bad situation. Helsing finished off her lecture on the importance of this arranged marriage. But, what if Naruto don't love Hinata or if Hinata don't like Naruto at all? Sarah's asked. This is precisely why the good lord gave us Aphrodite drugs. Integra then grinned madly and then Naruto sneezed and woke up crying in the middle of the night. The mission was intended for the alliance between the Helsing and Hyuga houses to cement. Sarah's was dancing through the ninjas and the militia like a ballet dancer would, tearing, slamming her hands through the bodies and skulls of those pitiful humans that were struggling to protect their beloved city. Hurry! Hurry up! Show me the true power of a man that defeats a true monster, 
Alucard teleported around the city shooting and sucking men dry of their blood. Meanwhile, Integra and Hiyashi were watching the destruction with a grim pleasure pasted upon their lips. So, is this to your liking Hiyashi-sama? Integra puffed out a smoke of a cigar she was dragging. Of course, Sir Helsing, this city has long been a thorn in the side of the Hyuga house. As agreed we will give our firstborn daughter to your son to be wed in matrimony. Also we will be your ally in any upcoming political struggle, Hiyashi replied. The only question I have to be how your servant will, Alucard, reduce the city to ruins, Hiyashi was inquiring with a hint of confusion in his voice. Simple, Alucard. Situation E. Cromwell destruction INTIVATIVE in effect, hold effect until situation E is complete eternally. Integra roared out, stomping her cigar beneath her like a man would crush a victim's hand. How splendid, this promotes a stirring in my loins. Order acknowledged. Alucard dropped his twin guns and beckoned for Sarahs to teleport out of the now ruined city of Nodnal. Then Alucard did something no one has even seen before. He summoned a massive rune complete with writing of dark destruction and hatred and rage inscribed all across the border which was refaced by a five-point star. The rune was slowly rotating around all three of its axis. The rune then suddenly stopped parallel to the ground and the rune began to glow a bloody red with Alucard above the rune while the survivors of the ruined town was looking up with awe and fear. Alucard then jammed his left hand within the rune and chanted a dark ritual and the rune exploded and the energy that was bound inside the rune all went down and slammed into the town. Alucard was still chanting the ritual while rays of energy were slamming into Nodnal. With a final word out of Alucard's lips, the ground under Nodnal swallowed the town whole and sent it to hell or what was closest to hell in the alternative dimension. Sarah's was standing by Integra and Hiyashi, wow, master is so strong. He's not human. She then smiled at this ironic remark. Alucard then glided to Hiyashi and Integra, cape billowing behind him. Situation E complete. Cromwell initiative now no longer in effect. Alucard then smiled, showing off his inhuman teeth. Alucard Sama, you have my utmost gratitude for destroying this accursed town, and you, Sarah's Sama, you too have my thanks, and Sir Helsing, I acknowledge you as master of true monsters. Hiyashi's voice quivered with both fear and respect. I expect you to uphold your end of the deal, Hiyashi-sama. Ah, but of course. I invite you to a feast in our house in honor of the fall of Nodnal, tonight. Hiyashi then bowed to his knees and inquired if they could teleport back to Konoha. After all he said it was, fun. Meanwhile at the Helsing mansion, Walter was passed out from the sheer smell issuing from Naruto's buttocks. Integra then opened the door and immediately covered her nose, gasping for breath. She then closed the door and went to the barracks for a gas mask and then put it on and then came back to the room and tsked at Walter's form that was on the ground spread eagle. Integra then changed Naruto's diaper and ordered a weeping Alucard to throw the disgusting dirty diaper away far away from Konoha and bury it. Years later, skeletons of small animals can still be found around the buried diaper that killed the animals because of their sensitive noses. As Alucard and Sarahs prepared to open a portal to the Hyuga clan's house, Hiyashi immediately stood up and ordered the staff to prepare foods for the guests. As Integra walked into the dining room with a formal kimono that seems to squirm with dark thoughts of its own, Sarahs was in a most beautiful kimono that accented her impressive body. Thank you for coming to our humble abode. Hiyashi bowed down to Integra which with a snarl, curtsied back. Mamori then came up to Sarah's and gestured for her to come with her and to bring Naruto along. As Sarah's let Naruto down carefully, Naruto sensed Hinata and then excitedly crawled across to Hinata. Naruto was now about 17 months ago. HHHI Nata Ta. Naruit spoke his very first word. Did you just hear Naruto kun? Mamori exclaimed, I know, Sarah's was jumping for joy right now and squealed like a schoolgirl. Hi Nni Ta, Naruto was calling out for Hinata and then Hinata did something no one expected, she replied, Na a ru to two. That caused the two jumping women to faint from sheer excitement. A resounding thud was heard through the mansion of Hiyashi who promptly sent an elite Hayuga to check the thud and the word was that Mamori and Sarah's was crying and holding each other's because the babies just said their first words. Hiyashi replied, I see, this is good news, indeed. Integra could only nod in agreement with a smirk. 
Let us make a toast to the unity of Hyuga and Helsing. Walter was now extremely drunk on the potent sake that Hiyashi made himself. With a foaming Walter in tow, the Helsing group left the Hyuga's estate, waving goodbye to the head of the Hyuga house. Well, this is certainly a pleasant turn of event. Integra smirked and then spoke some more, at least we know that they are united for eternity. Six years later, damn it, you freaking bastard, Naruto was dodging some of Alucard's bullets. What the hell did I do to you? Naruto screamed. Why can't I play with a friend? Alucard took on a hurt tone and shot some more. Hanada all the while was watching, trembling every time she heard the crack of Alucard's guns. Walter immediately stood to attention and said, Hanada, you must focus more on your studies and less time worrying about Naruto. He has a special talent that won't allow him to be harmed that grievously. Walter then smiled a warm smile. B but, it's so scary, hearing the guns. Hanada's voice was shaking because she was in the Jukan stance, parrying some of Saris's vicious attacks. Good. You've improved quite a while since we last fought. Saris replied as she flipped into a split spinning kick that slammed into Hanada's delicate skin. Bruises were all over Hanada's pale body. Naruto then finally had enough of Alucard's shooting and summoned his Gatling gun. He then recalled the moment he received it from his family. Naruto, this is the fruition of five years of technology available here. This is called the Storm Crier. This gun uses your chakra as ammo, so if you have a lot of chakra, you have a lot of ammo to shoot Alucard up. Walter then brought up the case that kept the gun and unlocked it in front of a wide eyed Naruto and an awestruck Hyuga family. Naruto, the gun is fitted to your size right now, so when you grow up to be big and strong, the gun can grow with you. Saras clapped her hands and smiled. Alucard then smirked and grabbed Naruto's shirt and dragged him and tossed him outside, bringing out his guns and exclaimed, Shoot me. Naruto was all too happy to oblige. Very good. You have outdone yourself this time, Walter. He then flashed a nice guy pose that immediately struck down Alucard, who was screaming, Oh, yes. The pain. Naruto then whispered to Hinata, who was behind Mamori, and said, I think he's a Mosh to fizz, person. Hanada could only nod in agreement. Naruto, I have a last gift to give to you on your sixth birthday. She presented Naruto with an ebony flute. Naruto in awe blew it hard. What happened forced Mamori to shield Hanada's eyes. For Alucard's head blew up. Naruto, really? You should be more careful with that flute because it is a special flute that will summon Alucard to your side if you're in a right mess of stuff. Well, Master, due to all the excitement around here I just had an orgasm. Alucard then reformed his head and stood up. EWWW, was the adult's only reply. Nei chan what's that word? Naruto asked Saras who immediately was at a loss of explanation. You'll understand when you're old, Saras was able to answer that much. Well, now back to the present. Naruto raised his crier and squeezed the trigger. The resulting shots threw him backwards several feet and Alucard's body now resembled that of a Swiss cheese. Good. Hurry up. Hurry up and kill me to prove that humans are superior to monsters. Alucard's chest opened up in an eye which was shattered by one of Naruto's stray shot. Ew. Naruto puked his stomach up after seeing a eye's fluid ooze out of a ruined eye that was on Alucard's chest. Your loss. Alucard tsked and bought his gun to Naruto's head which made him wet his pants. As Alucard's maniacal smile began to spread, he was immediately cut to pieces by flying wires that enclosed him. Really, Sir Alucard, must you terrorize the little boy so? Walter was asking with a tone of pity in his voice. Pay attention. Saras roared at a distracted Hanada who was immediately kicked by Saras. Ouch. Hanada struggled to get up after being sent flying by that kick. If I could just do something about her legs, Hanada then set into her stance and waited for the kick to come. She closed her eyes. Saras gasped and was. Saras gasped out loud, for Hanada had just activated her bloodline limit for the first time and her eyes had veins surrounding the eyes. Saras then attempted to jump back, knowing fully well the disadvantages of fighting the Byukagan. Saras then yelped out with pain as Hanada caught up to her and struck several chakra points shut on some of Saras's well shaped legs. Hanada then managed to hit one more chakra point shut before fainting from the sheer amount of chakra needed to keep her limit up. Saras was on the ground, massaging her legs, cursing all the while, 
After a few minutes Sarah's was able to get up and limp to Hinata and then ascertained if Hinata was okay. And then Sarah's carried Hinata back to the Hyuga's estate with words of good news. Meanwhile, Alucard transformed in a mass of sticky liquid matter that seems to absorb light and then Dog's head popped up only to be shot to pieces by an enraged Naruto which was yelling, Damn it! Why can T I have my freaking ramen? For Alucard had seized Naruto and teleported Naruto outside the Helsing estate right when Naruto was to taste his favorite type of ramen, this of course threw Naruto in a fit of rage. Ah, Nirvana, Alucard could only be heard whispering to himself from the sheer pain and torture his earthly body was being put through right now. At least it looked like torture to the sane people that populated the still rebuilding Konoha. Naruto had finally succeeded into ripping off what the men used to please their women. And then he sliced open the twins' companions to the wedding tackle with his ever trusty storm crier. Now some may question into if Naruto was sane or insane. The educated answer is Naruto is sane when he's with sane people and insane when he's with insane people, so, it really depends on the situations. Alucard, meanwhile, was entering the higher levels of Nirvana, with loads of passionate and pleasurable sounds. Naruto then jumped away to the Helsing estate, leaving Alucard to his devices. Naruto has certainly grown, Walter chuckled, before, Naruto couldn't even do that, torture to Alucard before. Walter then began his daily brisk power walking, leaving a mass of shocked and passed out citizens in his wake. I do not own Helsing or Naruto, they own me, as Naruto trudged back to the Helsing Manor, his mouth began to saliva at the thought of slowly munching and slurping of his most beloved ramen. He daydreamed about how he would stroke the sweet, tender, tender meat with his chopsticks. And he longed to stab and impale the unassuming meat with a kanai and tear apart the meat from its tendons. In short, Naruto was famished after that battle with his so called mentor, Alucard. Hanada, meanwhile, was cooking up some mighty delicious ramen of the exact same kind Naruto was daydreaming about. Coincidence? No one knows. Hanada had just came to the Helsing Manor from her estate. The Hyuga elders who was in charge of her training was now drunk to the world upon hearing that she had activated her bloodline limit at such a young age. The other elders who was concerned about Hanada's ability was now, serving, the elders who had betted on Hanada to succeed. Hanada was just wondering something among those lines about how messed up her family was when she heard a dusty thud that could only mean, Naruto was home. Hanada then walked quickly to the kitchen and placed a bowl and then scooped up and put on the plate a huge pile of hot, steaming ramen. Hanada then giggled at the thought when Naruto would see all that ramen, he would proclaim something really corny. Naruto, meanwhile, was ripping off his sweat-drenched clothes and then went in one of those, fancy standing bath, as Naruto called it. Naruto still had trouble turning on the shower and screamed, Bloody Mary! When he turned on the cold water and scrambled for the hot water and yet again in another, Bloody Mary! When he was blasted with boiling water. Yet some more curses and yells. Naruto had finally got the temperature he wanted which was lukewarm water. Hanada heard the entire ruckus and then started up the grand staircase that the Helsing Manor was famous for and slowly trudged up the absolutely massive stairs. At the top, Hanada was panting and laying on the formal carpet, fanning herself from that sheer physical demonstration. Hanada then jumped up and then walked to the door and then opened it saying, Hi, Naruto. Only for an awkward silence to deafen the entire mansion. For Hanada has just saw Naruto stepping out of the bathtub reaching for a cloth. Naruto's frontal body was completely exposed to Hanada's innocent virgin eyes. Hanada's eyes were straining to stare in Naruto's eyes and not his lower body. But alas, she failed badly, partly due to the reason that the Hyuga's eyes are capable of a vast field of vision and her skill with her eyes was not enough for her to see Naruto's best friend. Naruto. Now he could only say in a sheepishly voice, Hi. Hanada, how are you? Hanada. She finally saw what the difference between a female and a male was. What happened next? Hanada then fainted from a massive nosebleed. Her nosebleed sent her flying across the hall right into Saris's bosom. Saris then yelled and she got a taste of some of Hanada's blood, and Saris almost went bloodlust mode then but she was able to control herself and then Saris set Hanada down but not before jamming up some paper tissues up Hanada's nose to stop the nosebleed. She then walked in the bathroom yelling like a banshee from hell. Alright, Naruto. What did you just do? 
and then she saw Naruto wrapped up in a towel cloth, and then Sarah's was able to put two and two together and burst out laughing. Hanada actually saw you naked, and then she tried to walk out laughing and laughing, clutching her ribs. Matter of fact, Sarah's laughed so hard she cracked some of her ribs which were healed ASAP. Naruto, meanwhile, was in a foul mood. Hanada actually saw me naked, what if she think I'm gonna be a pervert? How can I explain this to Hiyashi? Naruto then began to panic at the notion of Hiyashi finding out that his daughter saw a male naked. Now speaking of coincidence, Hiyashi and his beloved wife, Mamori was busy chatting happily with Integra who allowed them in the Helsing Manor. Now the blood from Hinata's nosebleed was now pooling at the bottom of the staircase due to the fact that the blood formed a mini river. Integra then stepped in the blood and then she immediately screamed for Alucard. Now, servant. Explain to me why this, blood is in the mansion. Alucard could only cackle laughing and then bent backwards, breaking his spine in the process. Why, young master? Just go up the staircase and there you shall witness a most tragic event. Integra and the two Hyuga thought something bad had happened and then rushed up the staircase in a most undignified run. As they ran through the hall, they came to a still laughing Sarah's that was laughing and wincing from the pain from her ribs breaking over and over again. Hiyashi then spied his daughter passed out with blank, vacant eyes with paper tissues jammed up her nose. Hiyashi then saw a shaking Naruto trying to hide behind armor statue with his cloth still wrapped around him. Hiyashi then realized that Hinata had probably saw Naruto naked and Hinata had fainted from the massive nosebleed. Hiyashi's eyes turned into a steely white color and he then strained to turn his head to Mamori. Hiyashi could only manage a low, threatening voice. Honey, I blame you. Mamori then remarked, How is it my fault that my father showed Hinata porn when she was younger? Weeks passed after that, incident, Naruto was going his merry way saying, Hello, to a mass of hateful and grumpy people who seems to burn inside when they heard Naruto shout greetings to them. Why was Naruto so happy, we must ask, well because today, was his very first day of Ninja Academy. Hiyashi had, pulled, some strings to be able to get Hinata and Naruto into the academy so young. Meanwhile, the, official, supervisor of the Ninja Academy and the recruiter was all too busy flirting with shapely women who kept them oblivious to the world outside. Such a shame, Naruto then strolled to a swing set right outside the academy and sat on the creaky board. Naruto then spoke to himself, geez, that was awful nice of Hiyashi-sama to get me and Hinata in ninja school this early, I just wonder when Hinata-chan will show up. Speaking of the devil, Hinata was running for her life, weeping all the while, for impish boy had thrown a rock at a bee's nest and the spawn of angry and frustrated bees attacked the closest person, sadly that happened to be Hinata. Hinata, upon hearing the buzzing of dozens of furious beating wings, she just did the sensible thing and ran for her life. As Naruto was exhaling and swinging on the swing set, he was aware of a commotion at the entrance. For Hinata was running around dodging and prancing in order to avoid any stings on her fair skin. But why was Hinata trying so hard to dodge the stings? Oh, no, if I get stung. My skin will swell up and pus will flow out. Oh it's so gross. Someone save me. All of that thought raced through Hinata's mind, as she saw Naruto running toward her, she relaxed for a second. The bees descended, a piercing whistle went through the academy courtyard. Hundreds of squirming and dead bees laid on the ground. A massive Fumikan shuriken was whirling through the air and then sharply turned back and whirled to the roof of the academy. Naruto then roared out, Hey, WHO the hell did that? Such a dork, aren't we, Naruto? A black haired boy stood on the roof toying with his freakishly large shuriken. Naruto then whipped his head to look and yell at this bastard who got the attention Naruto so richly deserved. Damn it, you emo bastard, you could had hurt Hinata. PFT, and Uchika never fuck anything up, the mysterious boy in the blue tinted shirt spoke. Hey, Sasuke spoke, can't even defend your bethroned. What type of man are you, dork? Sasuke then jumped from the roof on the ground and was immediately jumped and glomped and then later fondled by Sasuke crazed fangirls. Naruto could only look upon the pitiful scene with bitter disappointment, Naruto thought to himself, I used to think Sasuke was so cool, as Naruto was reflecting on Sasuke's lost, coolness, Sasuke finally managed to break free of the mob or rather pile of lustful fangirls. 
Sasuke then jumped to a low branch but still too high for the fangirls to get to. Sasuke meanwhile, was in a most grievous state, indeed. Shredded clothes, mangy hair, bruises all across his fair skin, raging temper. That described young Sasuke's daily life most accurately. Damn those girls all to an eternally burning inferno. This is like the fiftieth time. Sasuke was screaming when he found that his most treasured possession was, stoled. Naruto then whispered to Hinata to go in the academy and leave Sasuke to his angst time. Hinata nodded and slowly inched away with Naruto and then entered the dusty but yet homely academy. Naruto and Hinata then walked around and found an instructor that was to help them guide them to their classes. When asked for their names, Naruto cheerfully replied, I'm Naruto Helsing. The instructor at that point had started to have panic attacks and then guide the kids to their first ever ninja classes. Oh the joy. The poor instructor still is going to a shrink years later, a shame really, he was such a skilled ninja. Naruto and Hinata waited for several minutes and was discouraged by the lack of people showing up. Then all of a sudden, Naruto and Hinata detected a faint but heavy footstep nearing the classroom door. Then a massive gloved hand broke through the door and Hinata began to shake. Naruto whispered to Hinata, hold me. For the man who had broke through the door was clad in a black trench coat with obsidian black bandana wrapped around his head and a massive face with slashes across the face, and there was a horrifying sneer pasted on his face. A aura of intolerance seems to radiate from him and he then began to walk to the board and removed his right glove and put his nails on the chalkboard and then finger nailed the blackboard. The resulting sound was so horrifying that every baby's within a one mile radius woke up and cried for hours on hours. As the man turned to a now weeping Naruto and Hinata, he spoke in a gruff voice, ninjas don't cry. Naruto tried to control his crying and successfully did so but Hinata was still scared and had some tears left. Who are you? Naruto finally got the courage to ask the mysterious man. Why, I'm Ibiki Morino commanding officer of the Anbu Torture and Interrogation Force, and I'm your sensei for now, he then grinned a sinister smile that seems to hide plots behind its face. Nevertheless to say, Naruto and Hinata was both very afraid, very afraid. So, you're our sensei? Hinata managed to squeak out. Yes, sadly. The Hokage appointed me to you brats, the nerve of him. Now we start your training. But first let me show you a personal favorite tactics of mine. Ibiki then took out a bag of ramen out of his trench coat, Naruto at that point was starting to foam, but alas. Ibiki tore the bag and poured the ramen on the ground and then, stomped on it and grinded it into nothingness. The scene was so horrifying for Naruto that he began to weep for the ramen then after seeing Ibiki do that barbaric act to innocent food was sufficient to make him faint. In short, Naruto had a weak stomach when it came to abuse to ramen. Pretty lights. A giggling Naruto was staring at a colorful lamp on the ceiling, and then with a bolt he stood up, screaming, Where am I? Hanada then clamped her hand over Naruto's mouth, whispering, Naruto-kun, please be quiet, for the massive man with the sadistic personality known as Ibiki was looking at a most splendid collection of torture instruments. Poisonous needles. Manual blenders. Skinning knives. Meat tenderizer. Those was just but a few of the vast collection on the wall that Ibiki was scanning. Then Ibiki let out an exclaiming remark and reached for the most devious torture known to mankind. It was a device of unspeakable cruelty. Ibiki then spoke to Hinata and Naruto to come and to face each other and to point at each other, a pair of very confused children obeyed. And then Ibiki said, ready for this. Naruto could only remark, what is it through? Ibiki merely countered, you'll see quite soon, boy. Then Ibiki moved his hand so swiftly that Hinata and Naruto wasn't able to react and then Hinata and Naruto jumped from each other only to be stopped. They then stared at the malevolent device known only as, the Chinese finger trap. Naruto was still blinking and looking rather stupid when Hinata inquired to Ibiki, is this our lesson for today, sensei? Ibiki then spoke, quite a sharp mind you have there, Hyuga-san. Let's see if your mind is sharp enough to remove yourself from that device without breaking it. He then gave evil broad grin and thought to himself, he he he. Those kids won't figure it out for a bit. A good thing I have connections at the joke shop. Ibiki was overheard to be laughing to himself when Naruto solved the puzzle of the Chinese finger trap and got the device off and then walked up to Ibiki and attempted to reach to Ibiki's shoulder. 
Ibiki then turned around and was thunderstruck to see a very disappointed Naruto holding the CFT, short for Chinese finger trap, and Ibiki then chuckled to himself and said, shouldn't had underestimated you kids. Ha ha ha, you guys are done with classes for the day, Ibiki then smiled and left only to be stopped by Naruto's yelling, hey sensei, we didn, t even do anything cool. To this Ibiki turned deadly serious and then spoke to both Naruto and Hinata very carefully, listen, you kids are already leagues ahead of the average kids your age, your bodies are at their peak for their age limit relativity, but you kids aren't fit to be called ninjas until you can sharpen your minds with tactics and methods. Naruto asked how they was already ahead of other kids to Ibiki could only exhale and explain to Naruto that Hinata had already activated her bloodline limit at a such a young age, and Naruto was capable of fighting with his weapon already despite the fact that he wasn't even seven years old yet. Hinata then inched closer and asked Ibiki if there was anything that would help their minds improve. Ibiki then tossed them a pair of dummies guide to warfare and tactics. Ibiki then spoke to them both, you kids honestly have no idea how to fight and how to work in a team just yet, after all, Hanada, there's a reason why your father chose Helsing to ally with, you may want to ask Sir Helsing and Hiyashisama about politics related topics and to keep yourself information. Ibiki then removed his bandana at which Naruto could only gulp and shake while Hanada was horrified and she began to cry, for Ibiki's head was covered with cigar marks and screw holes and slashes. Information is power, remember that, kids, Ibiki then put his head cover back on and then walked out saying, have a good day, leaving Naruto and Hinata to think on what Ibiki had just said to them. Hinata-chan, Ibiki-sensei is right, we do need to know more about stuff, do you know where to start? Naruto inquired. Hinata then nodded and then beckoned for Naruto to follow her to her home, the vast Hyuga mansion. After a few minutes of running and some tree jumping, they arrived at the gates, at which the branch Hyugas greeted both children warmly. As Naruto was walking up the path to the main part of the mansion, he was distracted by a series of low grunts and pants, he then walked over to see a boy with long flowing hairs and a grim expression on his face. Naruto then exclaimed, Neji-san, Naruto screamed as he saw a boy practicing his routine that involved popping cherries, he had a pile of cherries next to him and a pile that was already popped. His hands was sticky and red from all the popping that he was doing. Yes, Neji could only ask in a strained voice as Naruto had just interrupted his favorite part of his monthly routine. Why are you popping cherries again? Naruto asked in a disappointed tone. Because I happen to enjoy it and you just ruined the moment, thank a lot, jerk. Neji's hands was beginning to shake from sheer rage and frustration. For this wasn't not the first not the second time but the twentieth time Naruto had stopped Neji as he was about to pop a cherry. Whatever make you happy, weirdo, Naruto then beckoned for Hinata to follow him into the mansion. Finally those guys are gone, now back to my popping, as Neji popped a cherry he was starting to talk of Venus. Inside the mansion, Naruto then sent out a rapid stream of greeting to the servants who replied back cheerfully or they was rapped rather harshly by Hinata's aunt. Now, Hanada's aunt is a rather, large woman, that moves with the grace of a cat. Hanada's aunt had just whipped an insolent male servant across the cheek for not greeting Naruto back. Simply divine to see you adorable darlings. Hanada's aunt was waddling toward them, preparing for a bone-crushing hug. Naruto and Hanada knew that it would hurt them but they enjoyed the hug anyways due to the nature of the hug. Snap. Pop. Shatter. Those were the sounds you would usually hear if Hinata's aunt hugged you. Naruto was let down and then he popped some bones back into places while Hinata was teary from the sheer pain and then sit down praying for the pain to go away. Sadly it never went away as long Hinata's aunt was around. So what are you splendid darlings doing in this dusty shack this time of the day? Hinata's aunt was directing the servants to settle up Hiyashi's new bust which captured his steel-eyed expression remarkably well. The fact that he had his bloodline limit activated didn't hurt either. Well, we're here to study up on new stuff, Naruto shouted and then rushed to the library. Um, I guess, I'll go and help Naruto kun find the books, good afternoon to you, Hinata bowed and then chased Naruto. Such an adorable pair of children, a shame I'm past my prime, otherwise I would have got that hunky Walter in a snap, alas, youth is wasted on children. 
Hinata's aunt then gave a melodramatic sigh and then shouted at the servants to keep the bust steady or they'll have their chakra holes shut and they would suffer a painful torture and possible death. Inside the mansion's library, Naruto blasted through the door and slammed into Integra. As Integra saw Naruto atop her, she smiled and then moved Naruto off her and then spoke to him. So, Naruto, how did your first day of the academy go? Cool. But Hinata-chan and I met a really scary guy but he's way cool. Naruto then began to yell excitedly about how Ibiki had showed Naruto and Hinata his wounds and Integra grimaced a bit upon hearing about Ibiki's war wounds. Hey, sounds like you had an interesting day, did you? Integra spoke rather softly. Perhaps you would like to study under a variety of instructors? Integra asked with a hint of coyness. That would be awesome. Please do it, please. Naruto was shocked and then jumped and gave Integra a big hug to which Integra gave Naruto his hug back. My, how quickly have you grown, Naruto, you really are my son despite the fact that I'm not your biological mother, I still feel like a mother to you, Integra in a rare fit of sentimental feeling. Why, master, don't tell me, you've fallen for his charm already, Alucard sent a telepathy to which Integra promptly told him to fuck off. An echoing laughter rang through Integra's mind as she held Naruto who was blabbing about how cool it would be to have a lot of different instructors. As Hinata came in the library, Integra had let Naruto go and Naruto told Hinata about what Integra was going to do for them. Hinata wasn't as excited about it as Naruto was but she was still excited. Integra then told them both to go to the meeting place that Sarah's and Mamori had met each other for the first time. She said there was a surprise for them both at that place. Naruto, always a child, roared with joy and grabbed Hinata who managed to let out a feeble, bye, to Integra as he rushed outside and dodged Hinata's aunt and the weeping servants who was still struggling with Hiyashi's bust. As Naruto passed Neji, he let out a loud noise that startled Neji as he was about to pop a cherry. Neji then let out a loud and rather unhyuga string of curses at Naruto for ruining his passion yet again, such a shame really. As Naruto and Hinata ran through the city and jumped over buildings and trees, they landed at the meeting place to see Sarah's and Alucard as well as a Walter that was reading Icha Icha Paradise yet again. Walter was chucking and he was fervently reading every word carefully as well as analyzing the images. That pervert. This is so troublesome, a mysterious boy who was flanked by a large boy who was closely followed by a blonde and a pink-haired female who was fighting each other for the lead. Naruto then looked at them and asked Sarah's who they was. Sarah's replied, Wait and you'll see, Sarah's smiled. Why do you people make me do this? I do not own Naruto or Helsing, they own my soul. Amen. As Naruto and Hinata was greeted by Sarah's at the park, Naruto couldn't ignore the fact that there was four children his age staring at him as well Hinata. Sarah's Chan. Who are those kids? Naruto pointed frantically at the scowling boy the blonde and the pink-haired girls who was shouting at each other over some girl things, as well the large boy who was munching from a bag of chips. Sarah's merely put her hand on Naruto's head and roughed up his hair, making his hair even more rowdy than it was before replying that they were a surprise for Naruto and Hinata. While Naruto was getting excited at the prospect of surprises, Sarah's then introduced the four kids to Naruto and Hinata starting off with the boy eating the chips is Choji Akamichi. The scowling boy is Shikamaru Nara, Ino Yamanka is the blonde and the pink-haired girl is Sakura Haruno. Although I think three more are to show up pretty soon, as soon Sarah's said that last word, the park immediately began to suffer spasm tremors, which only intensified until at last Sasuke was seen jumping out of a bush with his clothes being gashed and tore and patches of bald spots on his head that appeared as like his hair had been ripped out, his face was smudged and he had a look of unnatural panic on his face. As he got to the ground and began to sprint the ninja-style way, the cause of the tremors was soon made clear. 4. There was a horde of young, angry, desperate fangirls all screaming for Sasuke's attention. The mob never let up their daily chase of Sasuke, even through Sasuke had moved on and found love, but that's a different story for later. Well, that's one, Sarah's chuckled awkwardly upon viewing the pathetic excuse of a chase. Hey! Wait up! A kid was running toward the group already sitting around on benches or entertaining themselves. One thing of particular notice was that this kid had a puppy huddled up in his jacket and he was sprinting toward Sarah's as if he knew her from before then. Sorry I'm late. Akamaru here got hungry and I had to feed him some meat, 
The puppy in question woofed upon hearing his name and began to cool off by panting. Kiba Inazuka here, the boy in question introduced himself to the other children. Akamaru meanwhile had snuck out of Kiba's jacket and sneaked up behind Sarah's and set himself right under Sarah's, therefore, Akamaru had a view that men would die and empires would go to war over. In short, Akamaru could see up Sarah's skirt. Kiba suddenly noticed that Akamaru had a slight nosebleed and was wagging his tail quite rapidly. Oh, Akamaru, you damn pervert, get over here now, get here now. Kiba could only think in horror as Sarah's was beginning to feel a faint wind around her ankles. Kiba nearly sobbed in relief as Sarah's looked down and saw nothing out of the original for Akamaru being the clever puppy he was, jumped from there and went to mark a tree as to not raise any suspicions from Sarah's. Kiba then strolled over to pick up Akamaru up laughing at his antics and then whispered in Akamaru's right ear. Damn it. That was way too freaking close, don't do that even again. Akamaru then suddenly got a vicious look in his eyes and woofed a series of faint noises, then it appeared that Akamaru grinned. Akamaru then jumped out of Kiba's arms. Now, Kiba is a boy, he is accustomed to women around him, but even this couldn't prepare Kiba for what Akamaru had just told him, Kiba was in a state of shock. Thoughts were storming through his head, but all of those thoughts had one thing in common, Sarah's Victoria wore briefs. As the group was chattering happily down in the park in the village of Konoha, proof enough of Konoha's recovery from Kyubi's attack all those years ago, it appeared to be progressing into one of its peaceful eras, however, it wasn't to pass so. Scores of miles away in a dense jungle populated by forbidden creatures and numerous other horrors that were excluded as to give the citizens peace of mind, in the heart of this murky forest, there is a ruined ward in front of a cave with a massive, hunching entrance. A man with long flowing black hair as well sinister eyes had emerged from the bushes surrounding the cave and walked up boldly to the ruined wards and performed a five hand seals combo as if to mask something. The man who had done the hand seals spoke in a low, serpentine voice. Master, the preparations are nearly in place. We have discovered the source of Kyubi the nine-tailed fox's downfall. According to the information currently available to us at the moment, there are rumors of a true Nosferatu residing in the village of Konoha. The man had ended his report with a respectful kneel toward the entrance of the cave. Moments later, a grinding, slightly insane voice boomed out, Ah, so the gods deems it fit to rain down what we cannot achieve in the form of a human, how delightfully ironic. Go out and gather more information as well, garnish whatever forces you are able to, but heed this. Do not let any of those damned villages glimpse into our true objectives, now go. The kneeling man had disappeared the moment the grinding voice had dismissed him, although the grinding voice did had a bitter chuckle, always the manipulative person, aren't we, Orochimaru? The voice then broke out in an endless string of roaring laughter that sent the surrounding area buzzing with movements. I see, he made his movements so early? The third Hokage seated at his chair behind his desk suddenly looked very weary. Yes. Hokage-sama, that tidbit of information was the best I was able to extract from one of his grunts. Ibiki stood in front of the desk with an arm heavily bandaged plus several new scars now was visible on his face. I ended up having to use, that, technique to just even get something out of a low-ranking grunt, forgive me for the pessimistic attitude but, you must consider this movement to be a grave threat based on the information I've obtained. Ibiki gazed for a moment over at the broken heap of a human that Ibiki had captured and tortured for information. Still, this is far too bold even for Orochimaru, to think that he could do this, it implies that he is not alone in this movement, the elderly man pointed out. But that's impossible, I thought your actions against Orochimaru taught him that this sort of thing wouldn't be tolerated. A sturdy man with a trimmed beard plus a smoldering cigar in his fingers roared out. Asuma. Please don't forget we are not dealing with a normal missing nin. He's one of the legendary sanins and such we cannot ignore his action whatever it is. The Hokage scolded his nephew. Besides, surely you don't think me a deluded old man? He, is already beginning to gather us information. Upon that comment, the room fell into silence with hardly any noise to disrupt the now tranquil atmosphere. Although, one do hope he hasn't fallen victim to his weakness, the Hokage exhaled sharply. This man in question was none other than Jiraiya the Toad Hermit. This man who was spoken so highly of by the third Hokage didn't appear to be one a leader would praises, in fact he appeared to be someone people would criticize. For, 
He was drunk and giggling and speaking to a mob of well-endowed women who had no morals at all. The shack that Jiraiya was staying in hummed with activity and vitality all night and all day long. It had got so noisy quite recently that the people who dwelled around that shack had moved on with angry words and rage in their heart toward this man who could score and they were unable to score as well. Whispers of alluring sultry voices swirled around a blissfully oblivious Jiraiya who had used up the last drop of his stamina and now was out of action for quite a while. The women who had surrounded Jiraiya immediately backed up from him murmuring words of disgust as well hatred toward him for being so, lecherous. Several of the bolder women had went through Jiraiya's belongings and found an ample amount of money. Upon finding this cash, several of the women fled out of the shack, although, some of the more devious women had decided on a punishment for him. With this in mind, they set out to humiliate Jiraiya in the worst way possible. The next day, as people woke up from their slumber and prepared for their day, a crowd was already forming at the front of Jiraiya's shack. As soon they saw who it was, the crowd roared out in laughter and even cheered upon this, tragic punishment to Jiraiya the legendary toad hermit, for he was stripped naked, forced to sit on a wooden torture horse, with a ball gag in his mouth, a tragedy. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.